Hey, good morning. It's Saturday, December 4th. We are currently experiencing a new moon. So today's a new moon read. Um, I actually woke up early today before the sunrise to do a bit of a uh, new moon ritual. <laughs> That's where this candle comes from. It's a little bit um, too tall to put on the altar, so um, I figured I might just do one of these. So I look all right. Oh, how about right there? Great. So the new moon ritual I did today was um, a cleansing. It was a bath, and I put some rue herb and some rose petals and bay leaves and I, I cooked it up and then once it's all cooked up you put in some Florida water some salt and then you cool it down with some room temp water and you take that into the bath with you and you wash yourself with these herbs gosh it smells amazing and um, with each of the bay leaves you take and you can press it to your heart to your eye, third eye into your crown and release any, um, you know, emotional baggage that no longer serves you or, um, um, ideas, idea patterns or, or thought, I, th thought patterns or habits that you no longer wish to cling to things you want to release there. And then with the third crown leaf, just meditate on all the ways you want to grow. And uh, so, yeah, that was a really nice morning. Um, alone in a quiet house. So I figured I'll just jump right into it. By the way, the um, this is where I got the little um, ritual idea from this book. And it's lovely. The last time I did this, it was really, it was really powerful. Like for days I felt very um, sensitive, I guess. We'll see how it goes this time. Mm. Balance, spirituality, and practicality. What is that? Full moon in Pisces. Balance, spirituality, spirituality, and practicality. Mm. It's time to release negativity. Look at that. That's what we did this morning. Full moon Scorpio. <laughs> Lovely. You are good enough. I feel like this is definitely a continuation of yesterday's reading, which for me resonated mostly like... Um, it's time for you to start giving yourself the credit for enduring and liter quite literally surviving life's trials. You are good enough. So not only is it bad enough we have to deal with, oh my gosh, this light, other people's negativity, but when we hold on to our own patterns of negative thinking um, when we practice self-sabotage or limit ourselves before we, before we even get a chance to start anything, that is incredibly self-limiting. And now, so this light's going weird and my ears are ringing, so I'm going to just take a pause real quick. Okay, I had to pull out the Moonology book so that I can read you some important messages from these cards, because what I'm noticing right away is that there's three full moon cards in a row, which I guess by statistically speaking that 
isn't the craziest thing in the world, but there's some like really important messages here and there's like a lot of sort of um, important endings showing up. So first of all, the full, any full moon is like the ending of something or the culmination of something. Um, it's coming to a head. So the full moon in Pisces could be about really needing to trust your intuition, but in more practical, by more practical means, as in listen to what your body is telling you, listen to your intuition, just try, you know, practical to me means try meditating and see what answers come to you. Let me read some more messages from this card. Whenever you pull this card, it's time to deep dive into your emotions. Practicality is at odds with the numinous Piscean energies that have no borders, so feel your way. Psychic ability is heightened when the full moon is in Pisces, and soulmates now co connect. It's also a time to send out your dreams to the universe, releasing your fears. Releasing your fears is really the one that sticks out to me the most. At worst, this card can herald the end of a dream. I mean, okay. The end of the dream, to move on to a different dream, the real dream. If there's been confusion about purpose, this is, I think, the energy of, of something getting cleared up. Or if, you know, that Neptune reading I did a while ago, and, and if, or if you know that Neptune is was retrograde and now is direct, it's that... Um, there, there was a five month period of clarity or maybe of, of like sort of like looking at something from a different perspective of information gathering and now there's like this new dream being formed but that means that our old dreams must die we sell our dreams we sell the dreams that no longer serve us that no longer align with our vision for our lives so it's just like the natural progression of things Full Moon Scorpio, it's time to release negativity. This is all about... <sighs> releasing toxic relationships. This is, you know, I would say any kind of substance abuse. Um, it's better out than in. That's what this card says. Emote. It's all, it's <laughs> all better out than in. It's time to move from living fearfully to living joyfully. So if there are things bubbling to the surface, your, you know, elements of your shadow self, things that um, you try to work on, um, the things that you're working on for yourself to become a better person, these are like our shadow selves. We have to accept our shadow selves and express them in, or attempt to express them in some sort of healthy way because they are very much a part of us. And so really it's that neg it's not that you have to like, how do I say like, um, remove, you know, like taking a knife and like cutting out a piece of yourself that's inherent to you. But it's more about how we think about our shadow selves. And um, releasing negativity means showing some self love. This is also about grudges, releasing any grudges. All right, and then finally, full moon in Virgo. Stop second guessing yourself. Raise your karma by doing something good for someone else. Find a balance between the cosmic and the mundane in your daily life. Sort out what's good in your life from what's not serving you. Clear out your energies via salt baths and meditations. <laughs> I did that this morning. <laughs> Practice getting more grounded by walking barefoot. No matter when you draw this card, it's a reminder that at any time is a good time to start living a healthier life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Message from the universe. <sighs> so if you are willing to accept that you are good enough because we all are, 
it also means that you are, co you know, coming to terms with all of your successes, all of your failures, all of the lessons, our shadow selves, our happy selves. It means that there is like a new level of honesty. So if this resonates with you, congratulations. Because <clears throat> it's not an easy thing to do to sort of like look yourself in the in the mirror um, and to be just really honest with yourself about you know our behaviors, our beliefs, and it takes courage to change. Courage to change. I mean, it takes courage just to release. Allow yourself to be happy. That's what this is saying. Um, and if this is a, a period of time of heightened spirituality, if you feel that way, meditate and journal. Read some tarot. My God, this light. I swear, I don't know. <laughs> I know. I know how to fix it. I mean, I can. It's just that it's work. <clears throat> and it's it's speaking to me, okay? So I can't just rob something of his consciousness, if you will. Oh no. <laughs> Check out my cup today. Holla, which is brew. <clears throat> today feels like a very witchy day. Let it be. Hmm. Let's just go with this. There's another one so in the Northern Animal Tarot again, and, and the seed came out. The tower, Jesus. Nine of Wands, the Lovers, Queen of Cups, King of Cups. Oh. Ten of Swords, King of Pentacles, the Emperor. Okay, really quickly, underneath we have the Eight of Wands, which is quick messages coming through. This is the energy of just um, feeling flow, like something is moving very quickly. You can observe it. You're aware of it. It could be a message coming through or just something happening very quickly. Um, We have the seed, the tower, and the nine of wands in the recent past. The seed is about um, this idea that new growth comes from complete darkness. Um, seeds are planted as in intentions are set on the new moon, which is today as well. So there's Maybe this is like a really good time to set some new intentions. This almost feels like early New Year's resolutions, but I even like to do that on a monthly basis, on like a lunar cycle basis. Planting the seed of sudden change. I feel like this is the energy of somebody who has been wanting change for a long time, but has not known how to manifest that necessarily or it's just been such a struggle 
I think that if we were taking the advice of the moonology here, it is about releasing all of this negativity, allowing a bit of spirituality to enter your life, not being totally practical and also not being just in your head, but bridging practicality and spirituality. Um, this is about, and then you got the full moon in Virgo. It's about practical steps forward. Plant the seeds. Have, in, have good intentions. Um, we have really heavy cup and sword energy. Because we have the lovers, the queen of cups, and the king of cups. The lovers, the interesting thing about the lovers card is that this is, um, if every year has a tarot card, it's the lovers because it's two, 2022, two plus two plus two is six. And so 2022 is the year of the lovers. The lovers is about balancing our, our many aspects again, our dualities. And so the queen and king of cups showing up right after that, it does make me think that there, this is like a soulmate thing coming up for some of you. For some people, there might be a very real soul connection entering your life. I'm not sure about the timing, but it, I mean, it's saying very quickly, eight of, eight of, eight of wands, very quickly, tower sudden. Maybe whether you realize it or not, you've been manifesting a soulmate. You've been manifest, your soulmate is manifested by your work in releasing negative thought patterns, releasing negativity. There's the end of uh, Ten of Swords, the end of, you know, this cognitive <laughs> dissonant <laughs> cycle. This is showing up in the future here. King of Pentacles and the Emperor. Yeah, this is about finding stability. This is about taking action. There's some like really powerful energy. So you might be dealing with an earth sign or a fire sign. Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus, Aries, Sag, Leo. The emperor is actually Aries. But then the, pentacle, the king of pentacles here. <laughs> hmm. I want to know more about the tower in the recent past. This one feels right. The Knight of Wands. Okay. The Knight of Wands showed up yesterday in, in the energies underneath. If you try to rush this seed before it's ready, that's going to lead to a tower moment and you'll be You'll have to wait for the next cycle to learn this lesson. Let the tower moment happen. Let yourself become undone because there is so much love that wants to come in. Release yourself from this negativity, but give yourself the time and the patience and the credit. It will, this, the, the negative pattern will end. There is, there is an ending here and then there's stability and power stepping into your power, but you can only get through it through it if you um, transit this, this extremely watery, sensitive um, period of time. Um, let's clarify the Eight of Wands. The Empress, yeah. You're eager to make something grow here. Like, you want it now. You just want to jump right in. So why is the nine of wands here? Yeah, you want, I mean, you want to be successful. This is the, this is the energy of instant gratification wanting to come through here, like without doing the work. I mean, I don't sense that there's anybody who wouldn't want to do the work. I feel like I just bent the cards when I said that. Man. The seed has been planted. That's why I say that. That's why I don't see like this 
disingenuine attempt to rush things along. It's like partially doing the work and then partially letting timing unfold. Let's show me the lovers. Ace of Swords. Yeah. So in this case, the lovers is, and the lovers isn't normally about like a soulmate card, in my opinion. It is about your inner dualities and like balancing yourself. It is about that like love embodied. The Ace of Swords, I think, confirms that for me. But what I also see here is the Queen and King of Cups, this partnership. It's a duo. The King of Cups is very stable in, in, in himself as well. He's, he can weather any storm. He's very much firmly planted. So if you're dealing with relationships that were very hasty, very hot and cold, someone's going to come in who's very, very steady. And you're, if you're, if you're going to enter into this Queen of Cups energy, this like intuitive, nurturing space, someone will come to match your energy. That's what this is saying, the Queen and King of Cups. I can't believe they showed up right next to each other. All right, lessons. Here we go, Ten of Swords. Ten of Pentacles. Yeah. Look at that, Ten and Ten. Synchronicities. We should we should be aware of the synchronicities here. Um, my goodness, please focus. Ten and ten. This tells me that the thing holding you back from reaching this Ten of Pentacles, sorry, Ten of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, the place of actually feeling very stable secure is some sort of negative thought pattern you gotta stop it you gotta stop that and think more about there's a there's a need for grounding here there's a need for major need for grounding here oh my gosh it's like when you're out at sea there's all this watery energy here in the present if this is a very emotionally volatile time for you um Find an anchor or something, you know, like belay yourself to one or another or um, if it helps reassure you that you will be safe through it. There's no way, there's no way but through it. All right, show me more of the King of Pentacles. Crescent Moon. There's another one of those moon phase cards. I love it. Um, I'll look that one up because I'm not exactly sure if I remember what that one's about. Let's give me a second. Okay, so the, by the way, the waning crescent moon, spend time building yourself up. Self-care. This is what I'm talking about. There, there is grounding that needs to occur in the future. Like once you transit this very watery cycle, you're going to have to get into your element and stay in your power. Once you've done the emotional healing here, once you've done the healing work, you've, you're going to have to ground yourself really quickly. Because, you know, I just noticed as well, so the emperor was last, and then the clarification for underneath was the empress. So what wants to come through is the empress, and again, there's like a matching of energies here. You're stepping into your power, and the, the emperor and the empress, the empress is coming to meet you. There's someone to match your energy. It's as clear as day that there's like somebody out there. Show me the emperor. The Queen of Pentacles. Are you joking? <sighs> Guys, there are way too many synchronicities here. The King and Queen of Pentacles, the King and Queen of Cups, someone who matches your vibe emotionally. Maybe they've been through similar things that you have been through in your life. Maybe you come from very similar socioeconomic backgrounds 
Oh, please, please focus. There you go. Thank you. How cool is that? Oh, <laughs> uh, and then finally, the emperor and the empress. Okay, that was really cool. Um, go meditate, go take a bath, a salt bath. Um, focus on releasing any negative um, thoughts and energies. Repeat yourself some happy mantras, some positive mantras, and um, I'll see you tomorrow.